Welcome to the Tailslate. I'm Ben Stacy, and I am here today with Melissa D'Agostino and Matt Campagna, and we are talking about Rogue One. We have all managed to get out and see it on the opening night, which mm -hmm. was great. So what do you think overall? I mean, to me, <laughs> now it's 50-50. There are four good Star Wars movies and four bad Star Wars movies, and Rogue One is one of the good ones. And which are the four? The four bad good ones? ones or the four bad, bad ones? ones? The bad ones? I can think of three. I mean, <laughs> one, two, and three, the prequels are terrible, and I'm sorry to burst your bubble, but Return of the Jedi is not a good movie. Okay. It's nostalgic and does beautiful things, and it brings the original trilogy to a close, but it is not a good movie. That's true. It's yeah, just not. It's I mean, not, look at what yeah. it's compared it's to now. It's in the middle, though, right? Like, oh, it's yeah, like it's the best bad prequels one. Prequels. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> go yeah. here. I would say and it's the best bad one, and Rogue an One is the worst <laughs> great one. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Cool. What about you? Uh, I liked I liked it a lot. I liked Rogue One. Um, I felt it took some time to get into it. The first act was a bit of a slug in terms of figuring out who I cared about and what journey we were going on. But then once we started on that journey, and then leading up to the ending, I really loved it. Loved it. So I feel like a bit of a mixed bag, but on the whole, liked it. Yeah, I liked what about it. You? Yeah, I, I really did enjoy it. Um, right from the beginning. The, one of the biggest things I was anticipating was how it would open, because you're always used to that crawl, and yeah. I expected it wouldn't make sense for them to have the crawl in this. So it was kind of neat to see them just have a long time ago in a galaxy far, far away, and then bam, you're right into it. Well, and I've got to say, for the only second, only the second time that we've gone in to watch a Star Wars movie that didn't start with the Fox fanfare. Oh, that's always a little it's, odd, too, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, like, mm -hmm. that was a weird thing for The Force Awakens. It was. You need and that. So, <laughs> yeah. They're just, like, yeah. taking away things that feel like Star Wars, and yet it's still a Star Wars movie. It took, like, like you said, it yeah. took some getting into yeah. for this, mm. because, you know, off the top, you're not being given that crawl. You're not being thrust into a into a space battle that feels like it came organically out of a narrative. You're just jumping into a planet. They've yeah. never done a tease. Like, there's never been a cold open, is what it's called, when they yeah, just yeah. do, like, a yeah. scene and then, boom, Rogue One, the card at the end. That was, that's never been done in Star that's Wars. That's right, that's right. The title came yeah. up after There are a lot of scene. things, yeah. like, stylistically, that were different about this, and I think that is a strength. Yeah. Because if this movie didn't work, if this movie, if it didn't work to make a movie outside of the Skywalker verse yeah. and to do something a little bit different, then they would not be able to do the Han Solo movie. They wouldn't be yeah. able to do the Boba Fett movie. They wouldn't be able to do these other movies that they had planned to do. So this movie had to work. And stepping outside of the aesthetic of, you know, the wipes that George Lucas had in the yeah, 70s. Yeah, when and you mentioned there's no wipes, it, yeah. I realized there wasn't no And wipes. never in the history of Star Wars have you been looking at a planet well, of the feature films. Have yeah, you looked yeah. at a planet and seen the yeah. name of the planet written on there? Like, yeah. that is also new. This movie was Star Wars in a lot of ways. Its DNA was Star Wars, yeah. but stylistically, they were shifting Star Wars into a new area, which yeah. is weird at first, but yeah. it, ultimately, this film works. I think, yeah. yeah, I think that paid off. I like that it was stylistically a little bit different, frankly, because then it's pulling you out a little bit. You you know the world you're yeah, in, you need but to you're be. watching a different narrative, and I think mm -hmm. that that's that really helped it. I thought. Yeah, I, I I like the fact that it was different, and I went into expecting it to be different. Hopefully, other audiences going into it are expecting it to be different because it's supposed to be. Yes. Yeah. Um, and I think they were smart to start with Rogue One as one of the standalone ones. Like, I think it wouldn't have gone so well had they chose either the Han Solo or... Boba is Fett? Boba Fett still on as one of the movies? Well, are they Boba up Fett in the was air? supposed to be the next one. Because and I'm then, just wondering, that, that story I don't think is going to be as compelling. Well, it kind of depends. We'll see. I mean, the, the idea that, the whole, that it's going to be a two-hour storyline means they have to go to the drawing board and figure out what's going to make it interesting. Because the yeah. old expanded universe storylines are not are not canon anymore. That's they're right, called yeah. Star Wars Legends now, yeah. right. which makes them interesting stories to read, but they are not, they don't in any way yeah, impact yeah. what's going on. So, you know, Boba Fett falling into a Sarlacc pit and then being partially digested and blasting out. I remember reading that book when I was like 15 and thinking, this is an amazing story. <laughs> not canon anymore. Yeah. Right. But that means something different can happen. Yeah. And I think that's a really exciting, really, really refreshing thing. I mean, you look at what is counting as canon now, there, the ship that is in Star Wars Rebels, the ghost, yeah. showed up in the giant space battle oh, at the end of cool. Rogue One. So they're making like little connective yeah. tissue bits. Saw Gerrera, 
the character that yeah, he's that, from yeah. he's, he's from, from Star Wars Rebels. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. And he was trained by Anakin Skywalker and Obi Wan Kenobi. So that's oh, a guy wow. who, when Darth Vader is worried about what the rebels are going to do, he knows that a guy he trained <laughs> is their machine man. Right. And right. it's a really he's Sagarera is kind of the Vader of the rebels, and yeah. that's kind of a neat, scary place to have him be. Oh, that's mm -hmm. cool. There, there was a lot in this movie that worked. I mean, overall, I think it worked incredibly well. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, the things that I think didn't work stuck out like a sore thumb. Okay. So why don't we start with the things that we think didn't work, because then we can end on a nice positive note about it. Oh, nice. The film. That's very <laughs> <Okay>. nice of you. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, right from the very beginning, the music. What did you think of the music? I, I think you mm. either use the Star Wars theme or you don't. You create a whole new theme. You don't it suggest was, it. It, it. It just felt off, and that was Star right Wars at the music, beginning. Star Wars music's tricky because it's made of motifs. Yes. There's a rebel motif, yes. and I think the, re the rebellion motif going through worked really well. You were never going to hear the Han and Leia music. No, you we were didn't never going to hear the Skywalker music because really, the the Force music that was like the Tatooine music yeah. that then became the Force theme, that music wouldn't have had a place here. No. Even with even with Donnie Yen's character, he was not using the Force. That's right. The Force was using him. Yeah, he was with the Force. Yeah, he was with it. He yeah. wasn't using it. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> so, like, certain themes would have had no place here. But Vader's theme? Oh, that belongs. does, for yes. sure. Like, there I are just, certain motifs that work, and I think... Um, do you mean off the top, though? You're saying... Well, like off the, the top, top? It, felt, it felt weird. Uh, because they were trying to emulate the, the theme, but it wasn't the theme. Yeah. I think they should have just chosen something completely different. Hmm. Also, I found at times the music was very on the nose. It was... You know, the music is supposed to help you feel the emotions, but this was sort of going along and saying, this is what you're supposed to feel. Here, look, this is what you're supposed to feel right now, and it didn't seem to work for me as well. Interesting. That's okay. I didn't even really notice, but I guess like if you are noticing it so much, then it isn't serving its purpose. Yeah, I was because definitely noticing the music. Because it stick out that much, right? And, and maybe, maybe that has something to do with the fact that uh, Michael Giacchino was brought in with like four and a half weeks to replace the other composer. Oh, I didn't know that. And had four that. and a half weeks to write it. Oh, well, and wow. there's not a whole lot of writing to do when you're handed the greatest music in history, and, and all you have to do is fill in the blanks. Wait, no, but, <laughs> but filling in the blanks for the greatest music and in history that's for really John well. yeah. Williams yeah. is a lot to do. <laughs> in a month. Yeah. 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 I mean, Lord. I generally like Giacchino a lot. Like, oh, some yeah. of his other scores, I think, are stuff. just fantastic. But that's interesting. I didn't know that, that element. Yeah, that so, so that to me was a little odd. But Giacchino pops out forgettable scores sometimes. Like, he did... Um, he did uh, Doctor Strange. I couldn't hum you any yeah, yeah. anything. That's the that. problem with this one. I can't, can't. You can't hum any of it. Yeah. yeah. I don't Whereas know the theme. after the Force Awakens, oh, you, Ray's, Ray's theme, theme was amazing. good beautiful. lord, Such one of the most beautiful thing. things. John and hopefully has ever John Williams written. sticks around, doesn't die right. on us because yeah, two more movies. I, I remember, that's all we want out of you, buddy. Yeah, I remember reading something that he talked about. You know, somebody else maybe taking over some of the. the Later Star Wars films. Oh. He seems very. He feels very protective of Ray's theme for some reason. Good. Good. Yeah, I think that's so awesome. beautiful. Oh, it is. It's yeah. Amazing. See, but that, that's another thing. This movie lacked. I think was the emotion. Well, hmm. and what's interesting is I've been back and forth since I I saw it. Because at first I thought I felt the same way. Emotionally, I wasn't as invested with the characters. Mm -hmm. I thought, why why am I not as invested with Jin? Why am I not? But then what I've begun to think in the days since I've seen it is that actually that was a conscious choice because what they wanted was for us to attach ourselves to the narrative of getting those plans and to the mission. Mm -hmm. And I think that I actually feel like the reshoots and part of what they wanted was instead of creating an emotional attachment to this character who, spoiler alert, we aren't going to <laughs> see again, I think they wanted us to be attached to the team and to what the team was after. But I think um, one of the effects of that is that we, we didn't feel as emotional about the yeah. individual members of the team. Well, this is the yeah. first time in the history of a Star Wars movie where we are handed an entire group of characters that we are supposed to get invested in and then be sad about because they are all gone. Like Ben Kenobi. Imagine if everybody in the first Star Wars movie also died like Ben Kenobi. <laughs> like yeah. that would make him not that important. Right. But his death is important. Yes. And the fact that that the entire team dies trying to get these plans out makes that first moment in A New Hope where Leia puts the plans into R2, oh, you're putting the lives of people yeah. you Those care people. about yeah. there. That, yeah. that, that droid getting kicked down to the surface, that is not just 
a, a, a USB key, man. Oh, yeah. That is the death of dozens and dozens yes. of people, a half a dozen of which you were on a journey with. I would also say that something that I like about this shift is that putting female characters at the forefront of stories is important, yeah. but also ex also changing the way we tell the stories, I think is important. And if they're shifting from a hero's journey, which is like the call to action, the hero goes on, faces the obstacles and, and you know prevails, if what they're doing instead is saying, we're putting a woman at the forefront and they are also gonna tell this different kind of narrative, I think that's actually pretty progressive and interesting. So I'm trying to temper my initial response of this isn't emotional enough with that idea that maybe what they're actually trying to do is tell some different kinds of stories in this universe, which actually is pretty cool, yeah. I think. Well, It'll be I interesting to see on a second viewing, see if yeah. it, how, how you feel. Mm -hmm. Well, and by all accounts, the movie that Gareth Edwards handed in to Kathleen Kennedy like nine months ago, that wasn't quite right the Kathleen Kennedy said, mm, this is a really great movie, but it's not the Star Wars movie we need to launch this idea of an anthology film. Because mm -hmm. if, if this movie didn't work, then Han Solo, that movie's not gonna happen. And then Boba Fett, that movie wouldn't happen. The, the hopeful plan to do a Ben Kenobi movie, like none of these movies get to happen. And Star Wars cost $4 billion. If they can't put a movie out every friggin' year, <laughs> They're losing money. Yeah. yeah. So this movie, there was a lot riding on it being just perfect. Yeah. And you know, you compare the reshoots that Suicide Squad had that ruined oh. it because of a couple of terrible yeah. focus groups. This was actually a group of people who wanted to make the right mm -hmm. movie, getting together and making it happen, adding to the team, doing what they needed to do to make this into a movie that felt enough like Star Wars, but was just different enough. Yeah. And yeah. by all accounts, it was adding more of a space battle at the end to make it yeah, feel more like that. other Star yeah. Wars movies. But to be honest, the best Star Wars movie, Empire, no doesn't do that. That's yeah, right. That's so true. it could have been something really special, Yeah. but we didn't get that. We got this thing that is very safe, but very mm -hmm. Star Wars, yep. very satisfying. Um, I would love to see Gareth Edwards' cut that he handed in nine months ago because yeah. it's got a more rebellious, like mean streak yeah. version of Jin, yeah, yeah, yeah. and it's got a, obviously some very different bits from Saw Gerrera because uh, yeah, his but... his hair is completely different. He has lines that he didn't mm -hmm. have at all. What will you become? That whole half story the trailer line. is not in the movie. Yeah, it's well, true. because that yeah. trailer was cut from. A movie we'll never but, see. Oh, that stuff looked really good. It I does. know. So it'd be interesting, like, to, to watch that original cut and then watch this the cut, the theatrical cut, and see what those yeah. changes are. Yeah. yeah. But I mean, I have to say, in our in the times we're living in right now, there's something about that team effort and that narrative that they decided to put into the theaters yeah. that I find really compelling. There's a few other things that sort of stuck out to me. <laughs> Vader didn't work so much for me. Really? Now was it the fact that he lived on the planet that he was no, chopped no. bits on? No, no. I found that a little corny actually when we land, landed on the planet. Really? I think and it's it was cool. like the dark tower was like Sauron's yeah. tower. Right. Oh, I think it's cool that he's internalizing his issues. But... <laughs> <laughs> well, you're, yeah, your interpretation yeah, is very deep. I, I think we saw too much of him. The cool thing about him in really? Star Wars and the other movies Now, do you is, mean him in the back to tank? No, 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 not okay. that. No, Because I thought that was just such Vader a cool in, reveal. That was fine. No, Vader in general, we saw too much of him he was lit very brightly, it seemed, in almost all oh. the scenes. Just thinking of Star Wars, he's more he, talked about. Like, his, his power is assumed. Like, he just has to give, you, give somebody a look and you think, oh my god, they're in big trouble. The, the choking thing he did just seemed like fan service. Well, the fact that the, he put a joke on top of that. <laughs> yeah. The fact that he said, be careful you don't choke on your ambition. I was like, this is his first, like, zinger. Vader's yeah, never Vader's had a, a comic now. But He's, should he be? That, that's, <laughs> I didn't feel threatened by him. I must say the the and he looked the a scene odd. in the last. Well, he looked odd because they had to make sure he looked like he did in A New Hope. I know where the eyes weren't quite right, yeah. and there was like a strange thing on his. And chest. the reflection when he was on his own planet in the yeah. eye annoyed me. It looked like I couldn't tell yeah. if I was seeing through or if I was seeing reflection. But of the that's red. what it right. looked like in A New Hope. Yeah, and I know. they had to be as careful as possible to make sure that when. You know, an hour after the end of this movie, when he shows up on that ship, that he's wearing the same outfit. And right? There wasn't enough of him gesturing, in like at <laughs> inappropriate times. Right. <laughs> yeah. Well. Well, the thing, the thing for me that was most magical about Vader in this movie was that in my mind, for as long as I can remember, Vader has always been able to do the things 
he did in this movie. Mm -hmm. But for the first time, I saw them. Mm. I saw the brutal, amazing way he can just wipe the floor with everything. That he's a one-man army. Yeah. And it completely explains why his anger is ratcheted all the way up mm. at the beginning of A New Hope. Yeah. He walks in and all those rebels are gaslighting him into thinking, oh, we're on a diplomatic mission. Shut up, asshole. I just saw you leave a battle. I yeah. swear you <laughs> oh, yeah. stole the plan. That last sequence, Everything about that, that oh. was, I, I really actually, I really liked. Because I felt, a, I actually felt him be far more threatening than yeah. I ever really took him to be. What did you think of Leia? Did you Leia? Like with the... I Leia, thought it not was, Leia? It was, it was fine that we saw her. I think it was the way they did the, the reveal. It was almost, it was an in-your-face, like, it's like, it's not a surprise. We know it's going to be Leia. We saw and what you did like, with Tarkin, dun, dun, dun. Yeah. so we didn't yeah. need to see. And Tarkin, yeah. oh, I thought, Tarkin was done was amazing. better Tarkin than Leia. Tarkin worked incredibly yeah, well. Yeah, I thought I was Tarkin was Occasionally strong. a little bit into the Uncanny Valley, but but there was some good close-ups and performances, yeah. and you're like, wow, this is really And it is, is really a cool. bold choice to say, we're not going to do Tarkin digitally through a hologram. We're not going to put him yeah. in the shadows. Yeah, He's yeah. going to be a scene partner, yes. lit the same way as Mendelssohn. They're going to battle. Yes. In front Tarkin of you. worked well. It was yeah. really cool. I, really and I did Tarkin. get Uncanny Valley, but the thing for me is like that Star Wars has never delivered perfect effects. No. Yeah. Star Wars delivered effects you have never seen before, yeah. and then George Lucas would go back a few years and make them perfect. <laughs> so I right. expect the special edition of this, Peter Cushing will be perfect yeah. in like 2027. But I do agree with you that the reveal, the camera work in that, that's this, the reveal of Leia, I felt it was, was a little cheesy, but then I thought to myself, well, we're going into a new home. There is a certain a amount, like movie. maybe what they're yeah. doing is like they're getting us ready again to, to go to that <laughs> style. But there was, I felt like it was a bit on the nose and we didn't need yeah. so much of it. Yeah. Uh, because you, you're right, we know what's going to happen. Yeah. Now, the other thing, this is confusing me. I, I may, maybe a plot hole, maybe not. So, obviously the whole fleet had to have been destroyed. Because otherwise, they've been transmitted the plans. Why would you just put it on one like USB key? <laughs> and, well, like, yeah, you that, have it in your computer, so obviously the fleet's destroyed. That's fine. That uh, blockade runner that Vader gets on can't be a blockade runner that Leia is ultimately on because he's already caught right. it. And what happens but why there is, Leia is a bit on that. What happens there is a bit confusing. And where, where's R two and C three PO? They should already be on that. They sort of watch them go away. Well, there's, there were a few little moments there that I don't think were quite as clear, but when I thought about it, I realized what I had seen. Okay. And watching that scramble of everybody leave, Antilles' ship is the Tantive IV. The Tantive IV is the one that is inside of uh, General Radis' ship. It's almost the escape, ha it's almost the escape ship okay. from General Radis' ship. He's the one who looks a bit like... Um, he's the Mon Calamari guy who looks a bit like... Uh, Akbar. Yeah yeah yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So his ship gets destroyed. Yes. Mm -hmm. But Vader boards his ship and watches as the Tantive Four flies away. So that moment where they're trying to hand the yeah, thing yeah. through the door before it closes and then Vader wipes the floor with them, that was escaping okay. onto okay, the Tantive Four. That's, that's fine. But we had R2 and 3PO, about the right amount that they should have been in this film. Yeah. Yes, However, agreed. they, they, they were watching went, a scramble. Oh, they're, yeah. they're going off to. Attack. They stayed on Yavin 4. Well, I think we left They should be before. on that ship. Yeah. I think they left. It we wasn't did. clear. We, we, left, we left the scene before we got to watch the scramble finish. Yes. Because Ant yeah. basically Antilles would have had to have been like, okay, what I mean R2, is, get on the earlier ship. in the film when they all went off to actually help the rebels that are getting the plans, mm -hmm. the whole fleet, R2 and, and 3PO watched them go away. Yeah. They should have been on that ship. I feel like they should have. Sh they would have had to have shown more of people getting on ships and all that stuff. And yeah, it just, yeah it you're right. Confusing. It was a bit weird it's to see them grounded. On there. It doesn't yeah. quite add up, Yeah. but I'm sure, yeah, I think you're right, but I think you're, you, you both yeah. are right. They leave, time, <laughs> they leave time for it, it to happen add instead up. of showing it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. so uh, what else? There was something else that I thought didn't work, but th those are the ones that really stood out. But There was a couple of scenes in that first, the beginning where that I didn't think were necessary. The ones that stood out, like reshoots? Yeah, like the one where, um, where there's that altercation on Jeddah where like where you learn something about Diego Luna's character yeah and you're like why did I see that scene oh like, do you mean the very Diego... first the first scene with Diego Luna yeah oh, where he kills yeah. the guy when he kills, when he kills the, guy. the guy I was like okay well you're showing me that he's had to do some he's a you know, scoundrel some, some things that he yeah. does you know he wouldn't want to have had to do but it was sort of there was a little bit of that at the off the top yeah that I thought 
Eh. Yeah, there was the odd bit that felt like a, a scene that was reshot. Um, and then there were the parts that we knew were reshot because words were not spoken. <laughs> yeah. And then there were things that um, are just, that have come out. Like yeah. the entire space battle at the end that was, um, that was just added, like they just heaped more violence it onto it. It did feel a little space. bit more, uh, there was some cool stuff that happened in it, yeah. but it, it, it felt confined for some reason, I don't yeah. know why. Well, but, and the interesting thing is a lot of the visual effects were finished on Gareth Edwards' version of the film, and a lot of the photography that shows um, Jin running on the beachhead with the Star War, with, with the Death Star plans in her hand. Yeah. So, like, there, the entire geography of that final battle scene was it's changed different. in the reshoots. Yeah, see. So I'd be very curious to know what the what the original idea was and yeah. how they shoehorned it is because I mean I'm a filmmaker. To me, that is a fascinating the Rubik's cube of trying to oh, make yeah. the best movie you can for all these different reasons. Because by all accounts, it was a great war movie, but it just wasn't the right that Star Wars. That may be Wars something movie. that they should have done more of, more exposition. I mean, generally. You know, people, don't like exposition in a movie, but in a war movie where there's plans and objectives, the audience kind of needs to know yes. yeah. what the plans and objectives are, and then, okay, oh, they're here now, okay, I know next they've got to do that. Yes. And I didn't get a feeling that we really knew, it was just a matter, just, we were just following no. the know. Yeah, it was light on the exposition. We were yeah. watching the, the team come together, but we weren't quite sure yeah. why everyone was there and what they were going to get up to, and yeah. I mean, we obviously we know ultimately what they're going to get yeah. up to, yeah. but... Yeah, I agree. And I think in that final act, there, that attempt to make sure that Donnie Yen's character's sacrifice isn't in vain, and that the the sort of Doc Brown moment where he's trying to wire that long yeah. thing yes. over into the row into the Rogue One, you've got these moments where clearly those were for something else. Mm. Like all of that was supposed to have to do with transmitting the plans. Yeah. But when they had to rework the plot and they had to rework the, the geography of yeah. that scene, they still had to make those three characters die for a good reason. Yeah. And so it was <laughs> right. to patch through to General Raddus to tell him the plans are coming. It's like, it, it got too uh, just confusing and convoluted yeah. for it to be really clear yeah. what the objective was. Yeah. And I think that was sort of a bit of the collateral damage of trying to hack the, the ending of that movie together differently. Mm -hmm. You lost a bit of comprehension. Yeah. Having said all that, there's a lot that works. Oh, we yeah. just we talked about Tarkin. I thought Tarkin worked incredibly well. Oh, we made a whole. There's oh. like it's a watershed moment in film. Yeah. For oh, the yeah. first time in history, not a re-edit, not yeah. a special effect. There was a complete synthesis of a dead actor's performance, and yeah. it. There are people who don't know they were watching a visual effect. Oh yeah, yeah lots. That's of incredible. Yeah. It's also, I mean, it's great and also scary what people will now do with that technology. <laughs> yep. As long as you have the permission, permission to do it from family, I think it's fine. It's okay. shades of Fred Astaire dancing with the dirt devil. Yes, <laughs> like, yes, yeah. yes. That was, that was a horrible <laughs> yeah. thing to do with Fred Astaire. It really but when, was. Yeah. But you know, when, the, when someone has already signed on the dotted line, yeah. there you go. Mm -hmm. so, now I think Jane worked incredibly well. I, I love Felicity Jones. Everything I've seen her in, she's amazing. Did you see A Theory of Everything, by the way? No. Oh my it. god, you gotta watch that. Wait, she'll, I'm not a huge just, Red Main fan. Yeah. We, we both are like it's her of, movie oh more okay. than his I mean well it's based on the book the wife's book isn't it yeah, yeah. pretty much yeah it's more her story than uh, I mean it's his story but she's the I emotional like get, drive behind it I feel like you get none amazing. of the benefit of it being a Stephen Hawking film but all of the detriment of having to watch Eddie Redmayne no, so I just good. haven't it was good. I just haven't gotten Anyways. around I liked her very much as Jen I thought she was yeah, great she did, she did a great yeah. job mm -hmm. um uh, Diego Luna was pretty awesome. Yeah. Yes, I enjoy. I, I love Diego Luna and everything I see him in. So K two S O is my favorite droid. He was, yeah, like, well, Alan yeah. Tudyk is already good. one of my favorite actors, and the fact that in Serenity, when when he dies, I started to think everybody on yeah. on Serenity was going to die. <laughs> yeah. and then when I had such like. PTSD flashbacks happening when his character died. I'm like, oh no, they're all gonna die. I'm gonna well, watch yeah. them die. When K2SO died, they yeah. all died. And that's it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, K2. So, so that was cool. The fact that they did kill everybody. Yeah, that's commitment. Ah, yep. Yeah. Although yep. I thought it was a little weird that Diego Luna's character like came back came like back? Jason Voorhees. <laughs> Like I when agree. he fell down what looked like oh, 30 yeah, feet yeah, onto yeah. his head, and then he still got up to 
do that little the perfect timing shoot. Yep. It's like, uh, all right, yeah. that um, seems like a reshoot. Although it was a surprise, so that, that's cool. It surprised me. Yeah. Yep. The Death Star itself, I felt it was nice and imposing. It was, Yeah. I almost wish, and I, when I said I wish we, we could have played around on it, it, we do get that, obviously, in the next film, A New Hope. Yeah, but, I think they did a really good job of reserving the planet destruction yeah. for yeah. the next film. They give you and an inkling. that was beautiful. And that was cool, yeah. seeing the Death Star use this weapon on a smaller scale. Yeah. Yes. And that seemed, I mean, terrifying and it amazing. Was. Terrifying it and, was and also kind of beautiful in yeah. an eerie oh, yeah. way. It's like, like a nuclear the, explosion yeah. is beautiful, but, yeah. but insanely also powerful terrifying. Also terrifying, yeah. yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that, that was pretty cool. Mm -hmm. what, what else worked? I mean, overall, it's a good movie. Yeah, I'd say the, the fact that Krennic and... Krennic worked well. Yeah, Krennic and Urso, I thought, had a really neat relationship. Um, there's mm -hmm. a prequel book called Catalyst that goes a little bit more into them being really great friends when they were young, and then how Krennic managed to trick his pacifist friend into making the world's, the universe's most destructive weapon mm. by telling him, well, yeah, use these kyber crystals, these Jedi crystals that power the lightsaber. Use those. We want to make a power source for all mankind. Right. And it was like, oh, isn't that a lovely idea? <laughs> yeah. But the fact that um, Krennic betrays his friend and that those kyber crystals wound up being such a such an important, wonderful little bit of like fan service. Everyone yeah. always thought there was a kyber crystal in there that made the yeah. that the Death Star weapon somehow connected to the Jedi's lightsaber. And I thought that that sort of fan service worked really yeah. well. Yeah. It was really nice. Seeing Jeddah, I thought was yeah. beautiful. Mm -hmm. Having Ponda Baba on that didn't make any sense to me though, because in two days he gets his arm cut off by right. by. Um, by a Jedi in Moss Eisley, but I oh, thought, what was that the same guy? Yeah, it's supposed sure? to be because his buddy has got the like the screwed up face, and it was yeah. total fan service. I yes. didn't. Yeah, some I of the, the, the 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 Easter eggs or fan service worked. I thought the the blue milk in Jin's yep, that house was great. worked well because it was subtle. Yeah, the stuff like him, it, it was too like oh like. Do we need to see that really? Yeah, yeah. yeah. but most that of it was weird. Most, oh, and some of the dialogue they gave the pilots in the space battle was too much. It was, it yeah, was like it was oh come on, you're just saying the same line. So on oh, the but they were there. different takes, and that's the cool thing. That footage is not from A New Hope. No, Those no, are no. alternate I know they're takes. All new. No, and that's the exciting thing for what me. Do you the mean? fact. When, when you see the characters that, run, that do the Death Star run in A New Hope, yeah. when you see them signing, when it's like Red Leader, when you see those scenes, those are entirely different takes. They're not the same ones. For, no, what I mean is they, they just, they, it wasn't the Red Leader, Blue Leader stuff. Yeah. Some of the lines that they were saying as they're flying around seemed a little just, yeah, okay, you're throwing them in there because it's a line we've heard. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, I, I also thought it was neat that you got to see Red Five get destroyed. Yes. And you're like, job opening, and then that's <laughs> and then where that's Luke Skywalker's gonna <laughs> get to go. Everybody in the space battle should have died. Almost everybody. No, they're gonna escape. Some people. Okay, some well, people. at least the main ship then had received the plans. Had exactly, yeah, 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 you've yeah. gotta have some. Yeah, or else, yeah. yeah there's gotta be some sense. battleship that yeah. escapes with a few X-Wings on it. I like the, the continuation or the sort of planting of relationships of, of fathers and daughters, and there's yeah. those themes in this film and how they connect to the the anthology films i really loved i feel yeah. like because you get a real sense of how important it is that they defeat the empire and where all of this started and they did a really good job of that yeah. of investing me in the anthology films even more yeah and this movie Absolutely. patches up the oldest complaint people have <laughs> the oldest why question mark it was such a why is there an easy place to play <laughs> the idea that the urso family is the savior yeah. of the galaxy yeah. because he intentionally left that little shaft is just, it's so beautiful. Yeah. And I think the fact that you have that moment where Jin is trying to convince the rebels yes. to go to war, because yeah. at this point it's a political movement. Yeah. They've never had a battle. Yeah. Their first and only major battle, as evidenced in the title crawl of, uh, of A New Hope, yeah. is the one in Rogue One. Yeah. That's the beginning of the rebellion proper. Yeah. And getting to see it, getting to see the jockeying for position, seeing how Mon Mothma deals with people, seeing Jimmy Smith's character, seeing yes. Bail yeah, Organa. I think they should have done a little more with him. but. I well, think they should have done more with Mon Mothma as well, True. quite frankly. Yeah. Yeah. I think it was important to be careful with how much, you know, you get invested in the characters from the prequels. You show up with Smiths, 
you get rid of him. It was just the perfect amount. Poor I Jimmy Smith. How many times has he heard that? Well, and then you blow up his planet. <laughs> yeah. And then he's done. <laughs> but yeah, I thought w watching Tarkin jockey for position over yes. the uh, over the Death Star and taking it away from Krennic. Yeah. It that just cool. shows you what a mastermind Grand Moff Tarkin is. There's a reason yes. he's the only Grand Moff in the history of the Empire. Yeah. Because he is a special kind of genius. And the fact that the entire Empire falls apart, essentially the moment that Grand Moff Tarkin dies yeah. and Vader is the only guy in charge, yeah. Yeah. Empire happens and things start to fall to shit. And then, of course, as soon as Jedi happens, if Grand Moff Tarkin was around, the Rebels wouldn't have made it through that. Yeah. yeah. I loved getting to see some more genius of Tarkin. And well, they could bring him back now. It, for, yeah. uh, for, let's have a Tarkin yeah, anthology Tarkin film. Movie, yeah. That's right. It, it does give him more uh, gravitas in A New Hope as well, now yeah. that we've seen him do stuff too. And you really get to see his relationship with Vader. Yeah. And it's the idea that, don't worry, Vader's going to handle that. I'm in charge of the strategy. Yeah. Vader's the attack dog. Yeah. 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 And I think the fact that the attack dog is the one in charge after A New Hope, is that's part of yeah. the Never reason works. the whole thing falls apart. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. So you're going to go see it again? 100%. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Christmas yeah, Day, here. actually. Oh, yeah. excellent. Yeah. Well, you're going Christmas Day. Yeah. 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 Got to see it again. Because mm -hmm. now that now that I got to see the first act kind of draw me in, the second act get me right into it, and then the third act just on all cylinders, yeah. I want to go back to that first act and see if it's better or worse on yeah. second viewing. I care about these characters now, yeah. but let's see if the, the frayed edges of the reshoots show more or if it just smooths out. I'm curious. Cool. Awesome. Well, there we go. Rogue One.